Hello everyone, welcome to North Dakota Forest Service Forestry Fridays. Today we're going to be talking about pruning. We'll start off with the definition. Pruning is selective removal of live tissue from a woody plant. So anytime you cut off a branch or leaves, you're pruning a tree. People in North Dakota often refer to pruning as tree trimming. And I think they think of the term pruning as, you know, part of pruning rose bushes or apple trees. However, it is all pruning, even up to the large cottonwoods that have huge branches taken off. Pruning can also be done on roots. However, we'll be focusing on pruning branches in this presentation. In the wild, trees in like a natural forest setting will grow up straight and they will shed their lower limbs because there's no light growing there. However, we tend to force trees to be in locations where they would not naturally exist in our cities. Therefore, we do pruning for our own interests, not for the tree's interests. Some of the reasons why we might prune include clearance for dump trucks, school buses, power lines. We can prove to remove infected branches, such as having black knot on choke cherry trees. Some species actually respond more vigorously with more growth if they're pruned lightly. Pruning looks nice. We want that manicured look on a tree sometimes. We can remove hazardous limbs from large trees, particularly. Pruning can space out the branches throughout a tree so where it's more evenly balanced, and it affects how light can be coming into the crown more evenly. And mostly, we'll be talking about pruning young trees to establish a good dominant leader. So if you look at this tree on the left, the American linden, it has a nice stout trunk. It's a big trunk that goes up, it tapers towards the top, and there's lots of small branches coming off of it. That is a good structure tree. In contrast, the green ash on the right forks about halfway up. It's got suckers coming off the base. Its higher branches turn in a bunch of different directions. It's just not a good looking tree. Should have been pruned when it was younger. Here we're going to go through some examples of common defects in unpruned trees. Competing leaders is a pretty common one. So if you look at this buckeye in the picture, that leader shooting off to the left there is actually taller than the central leader. And if that gets left unchecked, it's going to turn into a fork someday. And it's ash tree, you can see the fork is about six feet off the ground. And as this tree keeps growing, each of those stems coming off the fork are going to get heavier and heavier. And eventually that fork will be a point of failure. Many forks have what's called included bark where each stem puts on additional layers of bark each year as it grows in diameter. And this can create a weak point when these two barks are pushing against each other. This picture I took in a city park, and you can see that this young branch that should have been pruned off is actually rubbing up against the larger main trunk. This had become so bad that the bark was removed and there was a wound exposed outside. Suckers on the base of the tree are never something good. Um, suckers also exist in the crown, and it's any time a branch is shooting straight up, it can cause problems as the tree gets older. Similarly, any weird twisty branches that will grow into other branches as the tree gets bigger are problematic. Here's a picture of a hackberry tree that I found in a city park. You can see that it wasn't pruned when it was younger, and so it developed a fork, and as each of those stems got heavier, it caused a split, and this tree is likely to fail at any point now. If it had been pruned properly, it could have been a nice hackberry. What tools do you need for pruning? Basically, all I use is my hand pruning shears and a hand saw. There are a variety of other tools available, but the hand shears will handle anything up to three quarters of an inch to an inch in diameter. And the hand saw can pretty much handle anything bigger than that. If you can't do it with the hand saw, I recommend hiring a professional tree care company to do the cuts because you're talking really big branches at that point and it could be dangerous. For young trees, the hand shears and the hand saw should be plenty for all situations. So pruning basically works by redirecting resources from the non-desired branches into the desired branches. To illustrate this concept, here's two pictures for comparison. The picture on the left, you can see the tree started off with a few problem branches when it was young, and as it got bigger, none of those were dealt with. So the tree put energy into each one of these problematic branches, to where at the end, there's twisty branches touching each other, there's sprouts, and there's no dominant central leader. In contrast, the tree that was pruned while younger on the right 
had resources go from the branches that were removed into that main central leader. And you can see the final product is a nice, strong central trunk and smaller branches coming off of it with a good form. That's how pruning works. One concept to touch on when discussing pruning is the fact that there are bacteria and fungi everywhere. And so anytime you remove part of the bark from a tree, infection or decay can get into it. Where a branch connects to the tree is a branch protection zone. And this is essentially where the tree puts in defensive chemicals in that area to keep out infection if there is some in the branch. This is especially true for younger trees that haven't developed heartwood yet. We call this process of blocking out decay compartmentalization. Some species are better than others at doing it, um, but it will be critical in understanding where we make our pruning cuts. So in this illustration, you can see where a branch attaches to the trunk that there is a branch collar. It's an area that swells out. These tissues help with um, bearing the weight of that heavy branch, but they also have those defensive chemicals I talked about in them. So when we make a cut, we wanna make sure to retain the branch collar. You can also see the branch bark ridge on some species, and it helps with identifying where the branch collar might be. There are two kinds of cuts that we make while pruning. One is the removal cut, and that's basically you're taking a branch all the way back down to the main stem. I do this most often in pruning. And then there's a reduction cut, where instead of removing the whole branch that you don't want, you might just take the top part of it or a section of it down to another smaller branch, just so that you're not taking all the foliage and you're taking little by little every year, redirecting growth into the stems that you want. So in making a removal cut, you want to cut just outside of the branch collar, sort of at an angle. This was the first tree that I had cut um, with a removal cut, and you can see the tree already had issues, but I tried to retain as much of that branch collar as possible. Eventually the tree will seal off and it'll keep out any infection or decay from getting in there. In this picture, the American elm has almost completely overgrown the branch that was cut off. In the old days, they said that putting paint or sealing, pruning sealer, um, was necessary to keep out and help the tree seal off. That's not true. From what we've discovered today, pruning doesn't really need any sealing substance. If you did it properly, make right cuts, the tree can seal itself off. It'll be just fine. For larger branches, if you tried cutting right through, the weight of the branch might fall before you finish your cut and pull the bark off with it. And that can create a bigger wound than what you started off with. So what we usually do is a three cut method with the handsaw. The first cut is on the underside to keep the bark from tearing past that point. Second cut is above and meets up with that one to remove all the weight of the branch. And then the third cut would be outside the branch collar as usual. You can look up more resources on the three cut approach um, online in your own time. Some examples of improper cuts are flush cuts and stub cuts. Flush cuts is where you go all the way back to the stem and you don't retain the branch collar. More often, it's stub cuts where you leave part of it sticking out. As you can see in this picture of the crab apple, there's actually decay already in the center of the stem. It will work its way into the main trunk. Another type of top, uh, cut you don't want to do is topping. Topping is basically the removal of the top of the tree. And when the tree gets to this size, the stems are so big that it's really hard for it to close off and compartmentalize when it's exposed to a wound like that. Basically, decay is guaranteed to get into the stem and it is a death sentence for a tree. In addition to, even if a tree had survived, <clears throat> in addition to the decay, these sprouts that come off the top are very weak attachment points. So as those continue to grow, they're likely to fail later on down the tree's life. Here's a few more pictures of the trees that were topped. One thing I often encounter with young trees is that they were planted either too deep or they were neglected for several years and they'll have a little bit of live tissue, but lots of dead branches on them. When removing dead branches, you wanna cut back to the nearest live branch. So if the tip is dead, you just keep counting back the side branches until you find live tissue, leaves or a green healthy bark under there, and then cut there. If it's on the top of the tree and it's the central leader that's dead, it's the same concept. You count back until you find a branch that's alive, make your cut right above that branch, but you wanna cut at an angle so water doesn't pull up there and encourage bacteria and fungus. And the way that works is growth gets redirected into that nearest branch or bud that you made your cut next to. 
And as the tree matures, you would eventually get the kind of twisty F in there, but at least it would be surviving. Here's some examples of trees that I removed dead limbs out of. You can see that they might have started off much bigger, and by the time I was done removing dead tissue, they look like smaller miniature trees, but at least it was all live tissue. So in summary, when you're pruning, you always want to have a reason for pruning. You want to make proper cuts just outside the branch collar, not too close and not too far out, allowing the tree to naturally heal over. You want to avoid taking more than a fourth or sometimes we say a third of the crown per year. The reason being, those leaves is how the tree makes its food, and the more crown you remove, the harder it's going to be for the tree to regenerate growth and uh, recover from that wound. You want to use the right tool for the right job. Like I said, the pruning shears should work up to an inch, and the pruning saw for anything bigger. You want to maintain the tree's natural shape. And one instance I like to think of is spruce trees. Sometimes you see a limbed up on the bottom. Spruce naturally have their branches growing all the way to the ground. So try to work with the tree's natural biology when you can. Pruning is best done in the dormant season for deciduous trees, and that's because if you do it when the tree is dormant, it won't allocate resources to those unfavorable branches. If you prune late in the summer, the tree has already put growth into those branches and leaves, and then you cut them off, it's wasted that energy. So when possible, we recommend pruning during the dormant season. Finally, don't be scared to get out there and practice. Have fun. Everybody makes mistakes, but I promise as you keep on pruning, you will get better over time. Thank you, and I hope you have a chance to get out there this spring and try some pruning.